So, uh, as Lazan already mentioned, we use the template. We are never going to do it again. <laughs> no, okay, no, that's that's maybe not true, but it's a nice template. But we just didn't really have. We didn't use enough time on it. Or patience. <laughs> or patience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, our idea was because we're using LaTeX in university, we could probably be used to using LaTeX. Maybe we didn't have enough time with this template, or it's different to what we're used to, or we're just not good enough. I don't know. <laughs> it's not that long that we're using LaTeX yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but as it says, SBI, how to study in a foreign country, that's what it's about, because both of us study in a for us, foreign country. You all know me, but you don't know Cameron. Uh, that's my roommate Cameron. He Hi. comes from Portugal, basically, kind of. <laughs> or if, if you ask his passport, he comes from Wales. Um, but he grew up in Portugal and that's where he was surfing and uh, doing stuff like that and then came without any prior knowledge to our university to study the same thing as me, electronics and computer engineering, and he's pretty good at that, better than me, with some prior knowledge, so, well, okay. I work hard. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna introduce Daniel. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure all of you already know him, and most. I, I don't know all of you, so. I, I, hope, I hope not all of you know me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's his room, and you can see that he has uh, his old room, because now he moved in with me. He used to have three bikes and stored it in his small room, and yeah, that's basically <laughs> it. <laughs> and he's good to live with, uh, I think. That's good. That's good yes. Yeah, so as we said, Denmark. So the first thing that comes to mind when thinking about Denmark is basically darkness, rain and wind, I would suppose. Um, that's not completely wrong. Denmark does not equal good weather, generally. Denmark can equal good weather, but mostly it looks like that. That was a bit less than a year ago when I just arrived in Esbjerg and started studying there. I went out of uni in the afternoon at some point, not, not like now in the evening, but in the afternoon. It was our bit black uh, in November probably, or maybe even October. Um, bad weather can also mean a lot of rain and a lot of wind, so that's supposed to be a lake where you can go and sit. Uh, you can still go and sit, your shoes will be wet. Uh, and the other thing is the view out of our dorm to the neighbor dorm with all of, with parts of the trash, yeah you can see that. So yeah, it's windy, often. Another thing a lot of people know about Denmark is insane prices for uh, yeah, food, mainly, and generally living prices. I would say that's not ex exactly completely true, but I don't know. It's probably a bit more than Germany. I'm not used to German prices anymore. So for me, that looks kind of all right. <laughs> it's you to decide if that's a lot. X are really oh, horribly expensive. Right. Really? You can get a pack of eggs for about 12 eggs for it's I don't ten. Know, ten. one euro and. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But it, oh, still. <laughs> that, that's the yes. price you pay for uh, free roaming happy chicken <laughs> eggs. <laughs> but that's, that's the point. Denmark, they like their food to be good. So they have very strict regulations on, Denmark, uh, on food. That's also one thing, uh, Denmark did not allow a lot of imports from other European countries because they just did not live up to the food regulations of well, Denmark. In, so. the, in the village I come from, this spot, 800 people and they've got three grown chickens and everything. Yeah. You pay about two euros for 12 eggs. So Lucky you. It's, <laughs> it's really expensive. Yeah, yeah, it, it is expensive, okay. Yeah, well. So that's we are used to it now. Yeah, you, you kind of get used to it when you live there for a little bit longer. Like, Probably it's either you don't eat or you don't <laughs> eat. <laughs> or, or, yeah, actually, I don't think we put a picture. No. But uh, in the beginning, <coughs> before we had proper jobs in Denmark, or before I had a job in Denmark, uh, I went dumpster diving. It's cold enough, everything is fresh. <laughs> <laughs> what can go wrong? So <laughs> that's how I survived. What's the average um, student? 
students uh, came in for, for jobs in Denmark? More than, uh, more than in Germany. For, uh, I mean, for right now I work for the university and the lowest, I have two payments I get there. The two hourly wages, one of them is around 14 euros. That's the lower one. And the other one is around 28. All right. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> so you get about 10 euros and I don't know, 50 or 60 cents. Yeah, I'm not yeah. totally sure, but about yeah. 10 euros and some cents. So. Yeah. yeah, that is working so for the uni. So higher wages. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's right. completely fine to live there with those prices uh, if you also work there. If you come for holiday, it is more expensive, kind of oh. relative to what you're used to, or your, what you're earning. So yeah, uh, Denmark and languages. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is this was a model of a railroad in the Copenhagen <laughs> Central Station. <laughs> it was also on this, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot what that meant. That was. Oh, the, the, the joke is out of order, literally, because it could be also on this, yeah. which actually just means exceptionally good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's oh, the joke. Sorry that this is exceptionally good. It's too yeah, good, it's not working. <laughs> yeah, we are really sorry. Okay. Um, if you've been to Denmark, you've probably seen weird street signs. The one on the left actually means exactly what you think. Loose creatures. <laughs> the one on the right, I have no idea why you need the zebra crossing for the park bench. No. <laughs> I gave up. It's great though. You should have that Yeah. Okay, but Denmark is not only bad because like when it's raining a lot, that means we have a lot of rainbows. Which is nice. <laughs> um well as well as sand, there's snow. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and uh, intestines. Uh, this is like <laughs> a sunrise no. in the morning. The sunrises are pretty nice almost all the time if you wake up early enough. And this is a picture outside um, our university. Yeah, and it was raining. Can't really see it in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it is raining. Nice. Uh, okay, so how we came to Denmark, uh, Esbjerg specifically. Can Can anybody point on where Esbjerg is without reading? What? Where's Esbjerg? What Esbjerg? Somewhere, <laughs> in the, somewhere in the western shore. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Not not that far from Germany. Okay. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. pretty close. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. I don't think we have a laser pointer. But, but I think you can, I can use your mouse. Okay, perfect. There. That's Esbjerg. And the... I, whoa. And, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Esbjerg is not a half island. The island next to it is actually a full island and it's called Fenö. It's very nice. What are these? Uh, it's like... Military zones? Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sure. Military zones. Famous yeah. military. Yes, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. This Work is cool. Now Danish military. That's that's military zones actually. That's wow. true. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and Bornholm. <laughs> okay. So how we came here? <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniel came by bike, <laughs> and I, since I live a bit further away, I came by plane. Not this one, not that one. But, <laughs> but we have seen that plane cool. live. We almost touched it, but I think oh, yeah. that's not allowed. Yeah, but we come to that later again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Things to do in and see in Denmark. Uh, or Esbjerg. Yeah, Esbjerg. <laughs> one thing Esbjerg is a little bit well known for is uh, number one is Denmark's fifth biggest city, with wow. not that many inhabitants or uh, residents, seventy-five thousand. Um, but number two, they have a very big port for oil and gas and for wind, wind turbines. So on the left you can see the bigger picture of a wind carrier. Um, that's a ship that goes out in the offshore season, uh, sea, uh, what do you call it? Offshore regions. 
there you go, uh, puts down those stilts and is standing above the sea level, and then it plants uh, wind turbines. On the right is uh, very close to the port, yeah, an offshore oil rig that is almost onshore here in this case, <laughs> because it's not it's not still offshore. <laughs> it's still offshore oil rig, but now it's not uh, yeah financially uh -huh. reasonable anymore to pump oil or to drill for new oil close to Esbjerg because it's cheaper to buy it from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> this is uh, a kite festival. There's loads, loads of kites. Maybe I can zoom it in a bit. See there in the background? That's just kites. <laughs> and really nice kites. <laughs> And people come from all over the world just to see this festival and participate in it. And they customize and build their own kites. And this is on Fenu in this yes. case. So that's one of the beaches on that big, on that, not that big, but big island. Um, where you're all obviously, I mean from the left you have the dunes and on the right you cannot see it, but there is actually the sea. Yeah. And that's the good thing about wind, I suppose, and this is us playing with kite, and somebody on the right was helping me out, because I had a bigger kite, so it was dragging me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a smaller kite and very bad wind. Some of you might have seen that kite before, Nazan, maybe. It's called NASA Wing. They developed it uh, to land on the Mars. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And it flies okay in bad wind, in low wind, and very terribly in high wind. But I don't think there's that much air on Mars. So it doesn't matter too much there. Yeah. Another good thing about Esberg, uh, you can there's lots of oysters on Fenu. And uh, yeah, you can go and eat them. This is Daniel. And we're opening it up. <laughs> That's almost a year ago, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's when I went in the sea, in the water. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah. So one thing about Esbjerg that is also very well known is uh, those four white men. It's one of the things you have to see. Now you did. Uh, yeah. You don't have to go there, it's not really worth it. <laughs> they are kind of big, but look at the people next to them. They're not extremely huge. People refer to them as the four giants next to the sea. Literally it's called man by the sea, but man as a human by the sea. I, yeah, yeah. Sometimes there's four more interesting people. That's <laughs> four friends of mine that I met in Denmark. Uh, the two on the right are Danish people, the two on the left are couch surfers from France. Um, so you can actually have some fun with bad weather <laughs> next to those uh, four white men. But looking at the four huge white men is not that interesting, <laughs> mainly. <laughs> Yeah, they don't do tricks. <coughs> <laughs> well, you can't really see it, but um, yeah, you can walk really far out and literally be ankle deep, which is quite nice. Uh, this is like 500 meters out, let's see. And yeah, it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since I came from a hackerspace in Germany, I went to try and see some hackerspaces in Denmark also. Uh, I've had some visitors there also. Pekka has been there once and we went to a, a bigger <laughs> hackerspace in Aarhus, which is basically the capital of Jutland from Denmark, second biggest city. Uh, this one is in the hackerspace in Esbjerg that's just developing itself kind of. They're inside of like a creative workshop area, um, kind of like so Untermiete in German, I can't really say that in English, um, but they just recently got money for from some funds for a nice and big laser cutter, um, but otherwise that's basically the biggest and most important and interesting thing they have to offer right now, and there's not nearly as much space, they're only open once a week, yeah it's a bit more restricted than here, it's not the same being they here. Have a laser cutter. They have a laser cutter. I cannot see a laser cutter here. I just realized. Why, <laughs> why do they have a toothbrush on the laser cutter? Uh, to clean it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Once a week. Once a week, yeah, exactly. No, every morning and every evening. 
No, they're not German. <laughs> they're actually not German. <laughs> they, they don't do that. <laughs> You can come and visit us in Esbjerg, that's another thing to do. You can probably guess by the hair who that is. It's a cat. I was just wondering if that's me. I was like, no, I can't remember this. <laughs> that was the fluffy cat in Riebe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A bit grumpy. Not only on that picture, it was not really that grumpy. I think fat and fluffy cats look grumpy always, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean... Everybody feel free to come, it's a nice city, kind of. There are cats. <laughs> there are cats, yes. We are also there. And, uh, yeah, one thing is we have a very international community in the, uh, in the studies, because the studies are in English, or some of them are in English at least, and that is three people from three different countries eating food from a fourth country that we made ourselves probably in the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> in the fifth country. In the fifth country, correct, yeah. And something from a sixth country or seventh? Took the picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that is uh, two friends of ours from uh, Luxembourg and Czech, and obviously me in the middle. Um, and if you didn't figure out it's sushi we're eating. Yeah. Made in our flat? Made in our flat. Yeah. But uh, in, my, in my study semester, there's a lot of people from different countries. We have people from Bulgaria, from uh, Denmark, from Romania, from Germany, of course, also. From Australia, we have somebody from Mauritius, from Syria, uh, yeah, Lithuania, Iran, Iran, not in my semester. No. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very open yeah. thing, and you get to know a lot of different cultures. Right now, we have some exchange students from Germany. Uh, <laughs> We do. Not in our uni either, but uh, oh. we have some exchange students from Korea also, which is quite interesting. And you get to know a lot of different cultures and nationalities and food. I mean, this was not made by a Japanese person, but there is something that's called an international dinner, um, where everybody brings something from their own home, and everybody eats everything, hopefully. Yeah. And you get to know a lot of different cultures. Also, this is a bar in our collegium, or our dorm. Some people started collecting beers. All of those beers are brewed in Denmark. And that's only like a third or a quarter of our collection of bottles. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also, again, two Germans, one Polish guy and one Romanian. Diversity. You took that picture. You talked about it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can see or not. I climbed the tree to take this picture. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, this is how we live. We only have three pictures here. But <laughs> <laughs> um, here we're in the process, or Daniel is right now, because I was taking the picture, in the process of making a, a garden so we could put in our apartment. Kitchen. Kitchen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or living room? In our apartment. <laughs> in our apartment, yeah. yeah. And this is how it ended up. Uh, <laughs> Everything's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, we had to leave for the summer and... It, it doesn't look as nice anymore, but... <laughs> but we're going to change that. <laughs> there's no... There, there's two green plants still. We don't know how they survived the drought. There is still one tomato that size. Like two centimeters or something. And uh, one cucumber, a little bit smaller. But not, not the fruit, just the plant. <laughs> just the sapling, basically. The rest is dead. Yeah. Or harvested. Before every, any, everything died, we had like the chives, uh, bay leaves, yeah, yeah. mint, spring onions, and basil. And basil. Yeah, that was the basil. We didn't basil. have bay leaves? No, 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 no. We didn't have bay basil. leaves. No. And Tomato and cucumber. And we tried to plant tomatoes and cucumbers and red peppers, but only the tomato and cucumber tried to actually come out. Yeah. yeah. And some Haribo here. <laughs> that some oh, you people... that nicely. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually we got that from our neighbors that moved out as soon as I moved in, like simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave this to us as a gift. I'm not sure what that is symbolism for, but... Mm. Trying to be healthy, growing our own vegetables, but 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah, this is our kitchen. As, as you know, I've been raised here in the hacker space <laughs> with the kitchen. Um, that's how I left the kitchen at some point after <laughs> making potatoes. If you're if you're wondering what the white stuff is, it's salt. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You have to say, was it good? <laughs> was it so well? It was really good. Was it slippery on the stuff? Actually, Kate no. does uh, her potatoes the same way. It is really good because afterwards you have. I mean, you don't have to boil it over that much, put a little bit less water. I mean, the heat conductor just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the stove works. We just put the uh, induction plate there because yeah. it's quicker, it has more energy, and makes more salt all over the place. I don't know. Not a good idea. Um, but yeah, you have a lot of salt on your potatoes. You don't need to salt them, and there's like a small salt crust around them. I like it a lot. It's really good. It's just try to not be as messy as me, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I cleaned it though. What did we have in the oven? Oh, I think we had like a big piece of meat for oh. several hours or yeah, something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, opportunities. Uh, While well, studying in our uni, uh, there's some good opportunities uh, you can have if you just apply. <laughs> Or, you know, try to seek them. Um, okay, guessing game. Uh, whoever guesses specifically where uh, the next picture was taken uh, gets a free beer from me. Mate. Oh, mate. Uh, yeah. Uh, or your favorite drink or whatever. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to guess, but maybe you'll get there. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> it's Come not like that. No. Come on. <laughs> I was joking when it was. I said hard. Where is this? Where is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a free drink. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Eiffel Tower, guys. You made it pretty clever. You made it sound hard. <laughs> well, that was, it was not hard. hard. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this could be a very beautiful. I, I thought Paris was too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a boring town, oil rig. Very beautiful oil rig. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it was made for burning oil or gas. Not sure anymore. No, telecommunication. Was it burning? Oh, that was something. Okay, I well, think, never mind. I never think mind. Maybe not made for that, but they use it for that. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was for made for an exhibition. Yeah, just yeah. to show just to showcase how the Paris is yeah, exactly. working with metals. But then okay. they were gonna like throw it down. Yeah, but they, they didn't like, because they... No, they, they were going to pull it down and then uh, I think the people of Paris voted to keep it because, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no idea Should why. I, I think they used it for telecommunication. Yeah, no. They, Probably. Yeah. It's high up. Yeah, but why, why have you been there, Cameron? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> this was one of the opportunities that I was able to grasp. Uh, uh, me and one of my colleagues and I, uh, that's currently working with me in a project group this semester. Um, we applied uh, to go on a summer school trip to Paris. Uh, and uh, actually we got nominated from our university. And uh, so we were able to get it for free, the course. And our course was uh, operating systems and advanced programming and it was a very nice course and I learned a lot uh, and while I was there I made lots of new friends uh, some were studying web application development and that's just another picture on a disco boat that went on the river scene and the view of the Eiffel Tower it's called Legoland <laughs> yeah, so that was a really nice experience. Yeah, here we are in Copenhagen. It's another opportunity, um, kind of. So we went to Copenhagen. One of those guys with the black for, in front of their faces was with Cameron in Paris also. And uh, yeah, Copenhagen is a nice city. We got there for free, basically. And uh, there's another guessing game. And now you're getting a matter from me. Guys, come on. You can you can do that. It's not that hard. Um, 
We went to Copenhagen because we had to take a plane to go somewhere. I know you can fly to Billund, but it's not Legoland where we went. Uh, where is this? No, no, sorry, not that far. Where? Not Tokyo. Oh. Stockholm. No, further. <laughs> Actually, it's not so easy picture to be so honest. Not? It's just a city. Okay. Um, Come on. One, one tip, one hint. Uh, this is one square there that is very much lit up, always. New York. Yes. Yes. Who was that? Who is the that guy? Big train to New York from. No, 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 we took a plane. Okay. We took a plane. <laughs> Did I say train? I'm sorry for confusion. No, but we went to New York uh, because we applied for a contest. Uh, it was a case competition, basically, from a company for hearing aids. I think there's a picture with a hearing aid here. So uh, they, they sent us to, yeah, that's my shoes, and that's the metro in the background. On the left, that is, again, uh, the actual real state of liberty. It's not in Legoland. Um, but we. Yeah. Oh, somebody, somebody sees behind, sees behind our mask. Damn it. Um, no, but we went to New York um, with the company that makes hearing aids, and uh, the main purpose for them was to make them attractive as somebody to be hired from later on. They want new engineers, of course. And we were measuring people, so we had each of us has had a hearing aid with us, and it was measuring the decibels all the time, uh, all day long, so they could have some data about actually loud cities, because in Denmark we don't have big cities. <laughs> the company is called Oticon, and if you've heard about hearing aids, you've probably heard about them, I don't know. Um, it was very nice, it was a very cool trip. I was really confused by how much money they spent on it. I don't see myself working there in the future that much, actually. So maybe they wasted the money on me. But it was cool to be there. It was nice people I've met there. And uh, yeah, it was not only the four of us. There was also some more people. We've been 25 winners in total. So it's not that we are exceptionally great or also ordentlich. Or, I don't know. <laughs> out, of, out of order. But um, no, it was just we were some of the 25 people who won the trip. Uh, but I mean, that kind of says... The university gives you enough free time to apply for such things and to actually work on a project for such a case competition next to university and school to get, get good grades. If we go. No. It's, it's apparently not too hard. Which was another great opportunity in the summer. Definitely. Yeah. Um, this was also when we went to Copenhagen. Uh, to uh, have the meeting with the Oticon company about the kind of basically a meet and greet where they wanted to get to know the winners yeah of the contest and while we were in Copenhagen uh, I had a friend studying in DTU and this is one of their insane labs high voltage lab where they have huge Tesla coils I suppose yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah, and it's a really nice uni. DTU stands for Danish Technolog uh, Technological University. So, yeah. Yeah. This is not what they use for hearing aids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And this is our uni. <laughs> not so big. <laughs> not so fancy. Very fancy and welcoming. Yeah, it looks very nice. Now, actually, this picture is actually, uh, almost yeah. a year old. That was last winter. Yeah. There's no snow yet. Uh, now it looks very beautiful. We yeah. just did not take a picture of it. We wanted to, but time constraints, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's our uni from the outside. Um, that's our uni from the inside. One of the lectures, at least, our professor brought some cake because he thought we were nice people, I suppose. Um, no, this is... Not only because of this, but he's the best professor I've had in this uni yet. Um, because he also actually takes care of people personally. Yeah. We're not a big university, so there's only 700, around about 700, a little bit less probably, students in there in total, which is way less than here in Braunschweig, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, but that has a lot of uh, benefits. A lot of benefits, because 
I know that professor personally, and I'm just in second second year, mm -hmm. and I knew about like he was talking about his wife with us, like with our whole class, which is something you probably wouldn't do if there's 700 people sitting in one classroom. <laughs> you don't talk about your wife, and you don't bake enough cake for all of those people. Yeah. No, but he's also very good in teaching, actually. Um, so good. that's where I learned most from, probably. I mean, it may not be the biggest uni. Which could be a downside, but the upside is that very few students, you're very few students. And yeah, as I said before, we have this yeah. nice community of international people because a lot of the courses are international. And not only in our uni, there's actually three universities and several other Fachhochschulen in, uh, in our city. Uh, and lo most, most of those have courses in English. So there's a lot of international people and you kind of know a lot of people or like a big percentage of the people because there's a lot of meeting each other and mingling or whatever in the international community. It's just new, it's like 31 minutes. That's just 31 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have labs. We probably should make this a bit quicker, I don't know. Yeah. How much you also want to listen? Probably understand. Yeah. Yeah. So that's as you can see, electronics labs. You can have fun in them and cool your head when you're thinking too hard, or you can uh, let things do your thinking, uh, or measuring mainly. Mainly in this case, that was an assignment we had to do for the uni where we had to measure a lot of things. And I mean, there's enough measuring equipment for basically every student to do this simultaneously, almost, which is also very nice up like a very nice benefit of having a small university mm -hmm. that still uses a lot of money from the Danish government. Yay! Wow. wow. <laughs> that is, uh, there's also mechanical engineering to, to be studied in our university, only in Danish, but uh, they have very nice equipment. They have, I think it's the biggest commercially available 3D printer with one cubic meter printing range or printing area. You guys need to get one. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a trend. I've seen a trend with the three D printers here getting bigger and bigger. Maybe. Yeah. And we have this picture twice. Uh, but that on the right is my semester project from last semester, or half of it. So we're actually also doing actually work. We're actually working on things. And not only having fun in the lab, um, that was not what we were measuring there. I don't know why we, yeah, as we said, template, time, things happened. And in the end it boils down to, how do you zoom, you zoom? In the end it boils down to having, yeah. Well, your project hand in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Which I had a mini heart attack because it said this on the note. <laughs> but uh, one important thing to know is our projects are 50% of our ECTS every semester. That means 15 ECTS is this. Yes. And when I saw that, I was like, no. <laughs> uh, luckily, I went to the office and they, they had something wrong with the system. So You can see the office in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Good and actually, you can see it was 11 something, and the hand in was at 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah it's time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was uh, the last slide we have, or is there one more? There's nope. One more that says thank you. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Mm -hmm. Questions? Like okay. for so 10 minutes, nobody has a question. I have one. Yeah. Um, how's your Danish and do you um, do you need <laughs> Danish in your daily life? Uh, I can, yeah. Well, yeah. you don't need to know Danish because Danish people know English very well. Uh, Daniel, he knows Danish very well. I went to Danish lessons for a year. I understand some of it. Don't speak it as well because they have a really funny way of speaking. If you haven't heard it before, 
It's different. I mean, Danish is weird. <laughs> Danish pronunciation is weird. Yeah. As some of you know, I've been doing a volunteer year in Denmark before where I've been working with mentally disabled people for one year. You have to learn Danish there. After exactly. one year of doing speaking Danish every day with people who will not understand you if you don't speak Danish, you speak Danish. There's no other way. So that's why I'm kind of good at Danish or kind of okay. I don't know. And I think you have a thing for languages also. I like languages. Yeah. By which means did you travel to Brunswick? Train, car, train? <laughs> train. How this long time. did it take? Uh, from uh, Esbjerg it's six, uh, around 6 hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> or 7 or 8. Yeah, or 7 or 8 depending on the Deutsche Bahn, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we hope. We're, we're traveling away tomorrow at 7.30, 7.20 in the morning. Let's see if we make it for class on Monday. <laughs> you know, you're never sure with the Deutsche Bahn. No, um, no but normally it's uh, completely fine. One thing about travel in Denmark, Number one, it's obviously easy by bike. There's not that many hills. You know that. A but sine wave. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but another thing is, if you want to save money and you don't have a bike, hitchhiking is extremely easy in Denmark because on every on ramp on the highway is uh, a Schlangschleifen. Always, you can just stand in front of the sign, and somebody will stand will stop for you in at most 15 minutes. I've tried it in almost. Almost every time of the day, when it's dark, obviously they don't stop. There's nobody driving anymore. But um, when you're not completely lost in a rural area, somebody will stop after at most 15 minutes and bring you somewhere. So... These basement... <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they call it summer houses in Denmark. Right? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, it's they just call a it, euphemism. They, they call it submarines. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>